Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. This is John Buck again. I'm going to talk in this video about how do we find the Fourier transform of a sine or a cosine. Those are important fundamental signals we've seen a lot. And we're, I'm going to show you how we do that using the sifting property of continuous impulses. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend you pause this one, go watch that video to review uh, the video on, on the properties of the continuous impulses to review that, and then come back and, and pick up here again. Okay. All right, so again, the topic for this video is finding the Fourier transform of, of cosine and sine, or, or sinusoids. Uh, so the first one, we're going to find the Fourier transform of x of n is cosine of, of just for any omega naught of n. I figure I would do the general case, and then you can take it to the bank for lots of problems. Uh, the sort of way to do this is, is, is kind of a devious strategy that we're going to uh, massage using Euler's and other things to turn this into to match the definition of the inverse Fourier transform, the Fourier synthesis equation, we call it. Right? We know that x, every x of n is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, of its Fourier transform, x of e to the j omega, e to the j omega n d omega. So if I can use a bunch of steps to, to get from cosine to something that looks like this, whatever is in here will be my Fourier transform because we know the Fourier transform is a unique one-to-one -one matching between x of n and x of e to the j omega. So let's see how we do that. If, if we hop down here, as, as, I, as I sort of gave away with the spoiler a second ago, the key to this as so many things in life, well, or at least in linear systems, is to use Euler's relationship. And so we can write a cosine as one-half e to the j omega n and one half e to the minus j omega naught n. All right, so I've written it this way. I can say the I can think of the Euler as two different exponentials. And now I'm going to do something that's really unintuitive or non-obvious, except remembering I'm trying to get to something like this. As I say, well, if I think about it that way, I can say this exponential looks like what I had here with the sifting property I saw earlier when if x of e to the j omega is an impulse, I pulled out just one exponential out of all the frequencies, right? So I can say that e to the j omega naught n is 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of delta of omega minus omega naught times e to the j omega naught n d omega. Right, so what I've done here is used the sifting property backwards. I've, I've kept that scaling factor of a half around, but then I've used the shift, sifting property in reverse to turn this exponential back into this big messy thing, which at first looks like a bad idea, but it will turn out, just have faith with me that, that the story does have a happy ending. We'll get where we're going. And then similarly, so this, this term has become this equation. I can do the same thing for the negative frequency. So I have 1 over 2, the integral from minus pi to pi. And in this case, it's delta of omega plus omega naught, e to the j omega naught, and d omega. Right, and now, again, I've made this thing into something much messier, but I've, this is also using the sifting property that when omega equals minus omega naught, the argument of the delta is 0. And so that's the value of this function that gets sifted out. And then just trying to get it up to match this, we say, well, I need a 1 over 2 pi in front to match the definition. But I can do that if I bring it, put a 1 over pi in front and, and a pi inside the integral. And when I do that, I now have the sum of two integrals over the same interval. So I can bring these together Right, the sum of the integrals is the integral of the sums. So I have pi times delta minus omega naught imply pi times delta of omega plus omega naught, the whole thing times e to the j omega n d omega. And now is where I look back and compare to the Fourier synthesis equation and say, oh look, I have everything lining up. I have a 1 over 2 pi, a 1 over 2 pi, I have an integral over the same region. I have an e to the minus j omega n d omega d omega. By elimination, this thing here must be the x of e to the j omega. So it's sort of like we, we, we snuck up on the Fourier transform 
uh, from a different direction by working our way back, turning x of n back into the integral we need. This is usually not a good approach. You usually only want to do this for things that are periodic in time so that I write them as a sum of exponentials because things that are periodic in time, like cosine and sine, will have impulses in their Fourier transform and I can get to the sifting property. So I wouldn't want to do this for most signals, but for things like sines and cosines, it is the one way to do it. Or you can come in the other direction. You can start by sort of guessing the frequency you think it should be by where the impulses should be, and then, and then prove that it gets you when you use the sifting property to the right signal. Some students find it easier to go that way. So just to finish up, so our answer here is that we've just shown that for the cosine of omega naught n, the Fourier transform is pi times or everything inside these sort of blue brackets, pi times delta of omega minus omega naught uh, plus pi times delta of omega plus omega naught. All right, so that's the cosine. Uh, the sine is pretty similar. I'll do it again for completeness here. Again, the same trick. We're trying to sort of move things around until we get uh, to Euler's, or, or we can also start from the sifting property. Maybe I'll, I'll do this one the other direction and show you that. Start from the sifting property and say, well, I, I already saw with the sifting property that if I have 1 over 2 pi, we saw in the, the video on impulses, if I have delta of omega minus omega naught, e to the j omega n d omega, right? this will give me e to the j omega naught n. Well, if I want to make a sine sign of this, we know that I need to have 1 over 2j times e to the j omega naught n. And I have to have a minus 1 over 2j times e to the minus j omega naught n. Right, so I say, well, this will give me my e to the j omega naught n. And then I need a, a scaling property. Right, I can use the scaling property. I multiply both sides. Um, well, well, I, I uh, this would. I'm sorry. This would. I got ahead of myself. Let me clean that up. This would have given me the e to the j omega naught n. So if I want to turn it into a Fourier transform thing, I'll have a, a one over two pi here. And that would have given me a one over two pi there. I want the two, but not the pi. So I'll multiply both sides by a pi to cancel these out. So now I have a half, and then I need a 1 over j here. And that will give me a 1 over j here. Right. So now when I put all those together, I'll have 1 over 2j e to the j omega naught n. And when I sort of collect all this up over here, that says, well, I've got 1 over 2 pi times uh, the integral from minus pi to pi of uh, pi over j delta of omega minus omega naught. Right, so this is again my x of e to the j omega. I sort of knew I wanted the impulse. I can figure out the gain by scaling. Similarly, I can do the same type of approach to show if I want to get minus 1 over 2j here, what I need over on this side is 1 over 2 pi integral from pi to pi of uh, minus pi over j. And then I have the opposite sign inside the impulse because I want to sift out at minus omega naught from this exponential. So, and then linearity says, well, I want to add these two things in time. I can add. Uh, this with that in frequency. And so we'll see it's, it's again the same type of idea that I'll have two impulses in frequency. x of e to the j omega will be pi over j times delta of omega minus omega naught minus pi over j delta of omega plus omega. Okay, so again, I have two impulses, my sine wave or a cosine. The Fourier transform is just two impulses. Whether it's sine or cosine depends on is it real or imaginary and what the signs are. Okay, uh, so that's all for this time. Uh, 
again, the main idea, Fourier transforms of sines and cosines turn, or any periodic signal if you go further. But for today, I've showed you sines and cosines give me two impulses in frequency at plus omega naught and minus omega naught. All right, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.